The low end represents a significant amount of the total energy of a song. And if you want something loud, you need to have the headroom available before it goes to mastering. To really understand the importance of low end in our mixes, I think it's first important to understand that we do not hear all frequencies equally at different overall volume levels. A familiar example of this is the extra low end you hear when you turn up your stereo speakers or your headphones. The additional bass is not a product of your sound system. Our ears are just better able to hear the long wavelengths of bass frequencies when the volume is turned up to a high level. Since this is the perfect segue, I'd like to talk about the equal loudness contour, sometimes referred to as the Fletcher Munson curve, which, fun fact by the way, is actually two different people, Fletcher and Munson. I always presume that it was a single person with a double barreled name. Anyway, the reason I want to speak about this is because it affects all of the elements in our music, or more specifically, how our auditory system responds to our music and everything we are hearing. What you're seeing on screen is the equal loudness contours, a very important chart used for everything from microphone design to developing codecs like MP3 and is useful at least on an intuitional level when one is building up a mix. The curves on this graph represent an average of human hearing at volume levels spanning from the lowest curve at about 20 dB SPL, that's sound pressure level, to the highest at 90 dB SPL. For our purposes, there are a couple of fundamental points to take away from this chart. Firstly, our perception of the balance of low to high frequencies is never even, but it is more so at higher volumes. Conversely, we struggle to hear bass frequencies at low listening levels, so be careful mixing at a quiet level something you intend to play back at 90 to 100 dB SPL at a club. Otherwise, the bass is just going to be out of control at those higher volumes. No such thing as music is probably best experienced at his live shows, and he, like many artists, have understood this equal loudness and took the necessary precautions when mixing their music. But it is equally important that you don't listen to your music too loud while mixing as moderate listeners will hear too little bass in your music. There's a fine balance between the two. Somewhere around peaking at 85 to 90 dB SPL when monitoring in the studio is a good target zone. So make sure you calibrate your system. This also applies to headphone users too if you want your mix to translate well across all mediums. I'm going to segue here into the snare as the second point ties in with it perfectly. There are two zones in which we are particularly sensitive. 3 to 4 kilohertz is the most sensitive area of our hearing. It is where our ear canal naturally resonates. Incidentally, and not surprisingly, this is where consonants critical to our speech reside. If I play this snare again, muted in the background, you can see we've got a peak hitting directly in the middle of this range. Adding anything in this range with EQ or resonance on a filter will bring it to the forefront of the mix, but use it sparingly, like you would a strong spice. The next pronounced dip occurs around 12k, the upper limit of the graph around here. This is a good spot to exploit because we are sensitive there, but not nearly as much as 3 to 4 kilohertz. Technically, it is the third harmonic of the 4 kilohertz resonance. I have indeed exploited this 12k region for the hats, but we'll talk about them in just a moment.